Hi everyone and welcome back to Switch Up. I'm Mark Walker and today we're going to do our old style video buy, avoid or wait for a sale. I think I should probably throw another option which would be kill it with fire. I didn't think I'd say this but uh, there is a game in this list that makes Balan Wonderworld feel like an all time classic. So should you buy or avoid these games? Let's find out. First up then, we've got the sequel to one of my favourite point and click adventures, The Dark Side Detective, A Fumble in the Dark. Now this is very much a continuation of the original story and kicks off with you trying to find Officer Dooley. As with the first title, there are a number of case files and it plays out a little bit like if you combined Monkey Island with the X-Files and they're really well written, they're very funny titles. And despite not having voice acting or particularly, in air quotes, beautiful graphics, the art style and art direction are really solid but that writing will just have you giggling away to yourself. This time around the game features six different cases. It's got great music from Thomas O'Boyle and they actually lowered the price. So it's £10.39 as opposed to, I think the first game was about 11 quid. At just over a tenner, it is well worth that money. This one for me is definitely a buy. A slightly odd one to include I guess next. We're gonna look at the Metopia demo because it's massive. I'd never played the original DS games and I was intrigued to see what this was if it was just completely a kid's game and if the demo offered enough to make a decision on whether it's worth picking up when it drops. And I think it's fair to say that this is one of those massive demos in the style of some of the RPG demos we've seen. You create your Miis and you can also create a side cast to join you and then the story begins with this slightly unusual villain who again you can create yourself or just let the computer generate and he is horrifically still in the faces of all the different me's i mean <laughs> i was sat playing this with my kids and then all of a sudden he starts taking their faces off and i'm, I'm so sorry you can have to leave the room because the look of trauma in their eyes was uh, slightly disturbing but anyway the overall premise is that you and a group of me's play almost like an RPG and there's an overworld map allowing you to move from area to area but between each stage you go to an inn which allows you to rest up, feed your characters, spend your tokens on taking them out on dates to build up their relationships. Now as you build up the relationships it will unlock new moves for the turn-based combat. The turn-based combat can be toggled so that you can have it just do it for you but you can also take over doing magical abilities and there's a little bit of strategy there, it's not the deepest thing ever, but it does enough. And those little abilities that are gained by building those relationships give it a little bit more depth than I thought was going to be there. The best aspect really are the small conversations the characters have, like when one saves the other one. You can go looking for treasure, there's different gear and items you can buy with the game in-game currency that's generally found in treasure chests or one playing rock, paper, scissors. And I just wasn't expecting a great deal from it. But the demo is massive. I mean, I've done about two, maybe three hours so far on the demo. You can leave it and come back. And it does actually kick you off. It's like, you should take a rest. I mean, that's so Nintendo and I love it. So while I can't necessarily say it's worth buying for the full version, because this isn't the full version, I would say you should go pick up the free demo and, and give it a blast if you weren't so sure about it. Because actually, it's been a lot more fun than I thought it would be. Then we've got Cyberhive, which... From the artwork, I thought looked quite good. And it's a slightly unusual premise whereby you have a spaceship, which is a beehive. Lots of bees, um, <laughs> busty bees. Uh, well, I don't know what to, honestly, this is. <laughs> Essentially, the premise goes that you are in this hive, traveling through space. Occasionally, there are events that occur. You can place different bees into different segments on the ship, and that will then increase things like the repairing, or it might improve your ability to gain certain resources. The resources that you've got are shown at the top of the screen. Sometimes asteroids or other anomalies will appear, and they really do just just appear at the, uh, at the end of a turn over on the right hand side of the screen there and then you assign bees to the different areas to improve their I guess their productivity the problem is it's just not very fun you pull in a trigger and it makes this number go up yay there's bees in there now doing their thing and a percentage bark it's like a, it's like an excel spreadsheet was turned into a game there's no audio cue there's no 
visual reward for what you're doing. And then you think to yourself, okay, there's some combat in here and it plays out like a worse version of a, of a classic and you control that targeting reticule with the right stick and fire off shots that don't make connection in the right way. You'll sometimes hit the enemy as they come down and they won't die. I'm sorry, I, I like the premise for the game. I like the idea, but it doesn't work. And I also had a really unusual bug where I was playing along happily. Well, no. <laughs> well I wasn't happy. <laughs> but then all of a sudden it restarted and said, do you want to do the tutorial? I'm like, what? I haven't died. I was doing quite well, I think. My bees seemed happy enough. Um, so yeah, unfortunately for me, Cyber Hive, it just it hasn't hit the mark. This one is going to have to uh, buzz off. It's in a void. But then we've got Skate City, which from the eShop trailer, description and everything, I thought was very much going to be a Tony Hawk skater, allowing you full 3D control of your character. But unfortunately, as soon as I booted this one up, my seven-year-old walked in and said, hey, I've been playing that one on Apple Arcade. And look, I've got nothing against the arcade or mobile games in general, but they very often follow a specific formula. And this doesn't escape it. There's smaller stages, almost like bite-sized ones with different tasks and they're reasonably fun but I didn't find the controls quite worked for me. They were just a little bit odd. You had to hold down a button to push your board and gain speed but then you use both of the sticks to do different tricks and then holding triggers to do manuals. It felt like it, it would have benefited so much from if they'd have scaled back the levels made it fully 3D and I would have been more happy with just one or two areas Tony Hawk style that allowed me full control. It just felt a touch clunky and more often than not I'd be falling down stairs or it would be a little too easy to do the tasks and challenges and of the three stages while the areas and locations are, I guess are quite different they feel very similar and very samey. It's not a bad skating game and there's a bit more depth here than initially meets the eye. It has to be said that performance is decent in both docked and handheld. Everything's running smoothly and the visual style has a unique charm to it that I think most people will find quite pleasing. But I'd say this is one that you would just go and pick up on Apple Arcade for free or grab it on a minor sale. Last but not least then, and please if there are young children in the room, remove them immediately. We've got After Pulse. This is a third person shooter and when I saw it I thought it was going to be maybe be something like Desert Siege if you remember that series. A bit of co-op action against some highly armed terrorists didn't seem like a bad thing but in all honesty this is as if I got my grand to go and buy me Call of Duty and she was like no no it's okay it's okay I've already got you Call of Duty and she boots this little nugget up. Now I was initially assaulted by a number of boxes telling me that I needed to sign in. I put in my email account and it said no no that, that's not a real email. Are you having a laugh? I was like no that just genuinely my email so it took me a few times a few tries to finally for the game to actually let me in and once I was in I was greeted with quite possibly the lowest resolution image of a soldier I've ever seen full of pixelation full of blur and seemingly a soundtrack that was full of more than one song it's as if the composer was like Do you know what I've made a couple of good tracks here let's put them all in at the same time then you're loading into a game trying to get an on I mean don't expect to get an online game here I mean if you go out and buy 10 copies and then send them out to all of your friends you probably still won't get an online game after <laughs> after they've seen it the lobby and matchmaking system are appalling I wasn't able to get any online games with anyone but in all honesty look even at, even at a high discount I should imagine most people aren't going to be picking this up but if they are here's what they can expect when you get into the game the targeting system locks you onto any nearest enemy and you are bombarded with a visual and audio assault. It always amazes me in a world of free stock images and free sound effects how a game that's focusing on weapons can have guns that sound like they sampled a woodpecker. Like <laughs> Surely, surely you can do a better gun sound effect than this. I was trying to think how they made the sound effects in this game. It does sound like they used a chopstick and possibly a piece of wood and banged it together to make the gun sounds. It doesn't get any better with grenades. You throw a grenade and it, it almost turns into a flat pixelated sprite when it explodes. But you throw it right next to an enemy and it blows up and, you know, your John Rambo style 
flanking sideways, thinking that he's going to go flying and the game's going to congratulate you on multiple levels, but the explosion does nothing to him. Or he, he literally looks at it and says, what are you worried about? And carries on running. You can aim down your sights, so that's one blessing in disguise, but you won't find any benefit from shooting them in the head. They'll swallow those bullets like a hungry squirrel collecting nuts. The load times are equally appalling, but I think the PS de resistance, the real crown and glory, was when you go to move left and right, and I can hear Michael Jackson playing in my head because it's as if he's doing a sideways moonwalk. I think with all of this said, you probably know that this is an absolute buy. Go out and get it now if you want your eyes to burn and your switch to melt. This isn't a void. That's it for this week. Let me know in the comments some games that maybe we've missed that you'd like us to check out. I've already got a couple for the next video, none quite as delightful as After Pulse, but I'll do my best. As always, if you enjoy the content, then do consider sticking around, and a big thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!